afternoon. Welcome to another edition of uh, Waken Sunday Talk. My name is Garen, if you haven't seen me before, and uh, it's, uh, it's great to have you here today. Um, we're going to give it just a minute for some people to get online. And um, I'm, I'm, in the meantime, I'm just going to let you know where everything is, okay? We have the Awaken the World page, which uh, will, has a video list there. There's roughly 45 videos to take a look at. And we also have the Awaken the World group, which is a public group. Um, you can send a request in to join. We have a short course on consciousness to take a look at. And uh, it's a really great little group of, of like-minded people who are all about raising consciousness. So we have a really exciting lineup of stuff to talk about today, and I'm really excited about it. Hello, Janet. Hello, Rachel. <laughs> nice to see you both. Hopefully the video will keep up, but I'm assured that the audio stream is just fine. Uh, we had another big snowstorm again, uh, but we seem to have good connection so far. So we'll just hope that holds out. And like I said, as long as you can hear, that, that's, that's the main part here. So uh, we had some really good questions, and we're going to talk about physical illness today. But first, we're going to field a question from Sid, uh, from Cindy, and I just grabbed this in time. And it's a really good question. She said, well, when I'm uh, praying in, in gratitude or, or praying at all, who am I addressing? And oh, hello, we've got some other people come, uh, come online. Debbie is here and Janet as well. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, here's the th same thing. No matter where we are in our existence, no matter what we're doing, we're always addressing the divine. And, and this is, this is a, one of the things that you, you just have to work on internalizing with yourself, okay? We, we, we live in this uh, uh, illusion, and before I go any further, I'm just going to let you know, I, I, I was up at about 4 a.m. this morning, so I didn't quite get a whole night's sleep, and the flu's kind of still got me, so I, I have a little bit of symptom relief here, and I've been uh, doing a lot of garlic and ginger drink, which has really, really helped, so I'm feeling pretty good, but if my voice starts to go a bit, forgive me. So... Uh, this is one of the things we have to understand. Anytime we're addressing anything, anything we look upon, anything we gaze upon, anything we hear, anything we touch, anything we feel, it's all the divine. It's all manifest within and part of and through the sea of consciousness that we are all a glorious part of. When we address another person, we're addressing the divine. We're, addre we're addressing an aspect of the creative consciousness of the whole of creation gazing through us through its eyes. And we, in return, are addressing it as the divine ourself. And this is part of what we're here to realize. This is, the, this is one of the, the joys and one of the, the monumental, life-changing realizations that you you can work on internalizing within yourself is the understanding that, and even if you can't quite grasp this yet, if God is all things, if that infinite sea of consciousness in all capitals is all things, where are we manifest? We're manifest inside. We're, we're never separate. There's no heaven to get to. We already are here. It is our false sense of identification, our egoic conditioning, the effects of making a conscious choice to come here and forget what we truly were to truly enjoy the experience and to be able to wake up within the experience and relearn what we are and, and find out all over again. It is magnificent. So the short answer is, when you pray, any prayer, and gratitude should always be the only prayer. Because before you've even asked, it's been granted unto you. Before you even conceptualized you had a need for it, the universe has already placed it before you. You know, a lot of people say, it sounds really great, but how do you live in that state? And I talk to my wife about this all the time. It, it, you know, and that Prince EA video that I posted earlier, 
Um, he's saying the exact same thing. I quit. What, what does I quit mean? It means I surrender. I, I surrender. I'm no longer going to be bound by anything I thought that bound me. I'm no longer going to be limited by anything I thought that limited me. I'm going to accept that if there's other people in this world that, that have a, a belief and a knowing that we are so much more, then maybe I can go there too. And of course, the answer is a blessed yes. As I said, we all sit down at the same table. It's a round table. And we're all at the same height. It, it's, it's beautiful. So the short answer, any prayer, any engagement with anybody or anything is the divine interacting with itself. You can consciously choose to bring this awareness into your being in your every interaction. And I can tell you, and one day I will have my wife come on and, and give you the straight up goods on how Mother Nature responds to me. But I, I've had everything from uh, the, the largest hawk you could imagine possible come and sit down on a branch and have a conversation with me and allow me to bring my wife over to show the bird to her, to bringing creatures in the house that just show up for a visit and then leave a short time later. We All the time, we, we are being watched by uh, the eyes of truth are always upon us. The whole of creation is always looking back on itself. This is, this is the beautiful thing. We, we just have to come from that place. Come from that strength. And, and this is the joy of our being. That this is the, you know, it's so easy to get caught up in the mundane, to get caught up in the, 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 the Maya, the, the illusion. And it's just not real. It's just not. <laughs> I tell you, the first time you have an honest Satori experience, you will learn to deep belly laugh at nothing at all. Just, just because the whole of it is so damn funny in so many ways. And on the surface, you know, when, when you get lost on the surface, it can look terrible. You know, my, my wife, we were driving today and, and she was saying, you know, I'm, I'm having a hard time. Like, like, how do you love someone who does such harm? And as we talked about, they're asleep. And ultimately, there is nothing harmed. It is nothing. You are not your body. That, that egoic energy that you are cannot be harmed either. It thinks it can be harmed, but it's not attached to the body. It's not resident in the body. The body is a car you use. When the car gets busted up and broken, you shrug your, your spiritual shoulders and you take a little vacation and then you go out and you pick a new model. And you get back in for another drive of your life. This is the joy in, in which we live. And, and this is what comes out of the question, who, do you, who are you addressing when you pray? The same thing that you're addressing in every moment of every day of your existence, the divine. Keep this in your heart and watch life begin to flow naturally for you. Uh, we're going to go on to illness. And the reason I wanted to talk about illness is, you know, I, I managed to get sick. And it doesn't happen very often. Uh, two flus uh, in 30 years and, and really nothing else, except for a lot of broken bones and other things, but that's different. Now, we can think of illness as a dissonant vibration within the vibratory field that we would term our bodies. And as we talked about a few times already, our bodies are not solid physical objects. They just appear to be, as does everything else. Excuse me. Our body, in fact, is an energy field. It is a field made up of various densities of energy. And we were talking about chakras yesterday. And, you know, after I basically sliced all the people to pieces about the reality of chakras, and I do apologize, it's, it's no harm meant. 
Uh, there, there's not entities called chakras. Uh, that, that's a label on an, a nodal point of energy, and it is part of the structure of your physical being. It cannot be messed with. You can affect it through your mind, your belief system. And when it comes to our own personal energy levels, one of the most fundamental things you can do to heal yourself and another person is great, but you don't even need another person. And simply this, just to hug yourself. The same endorphins are released. The same healing effects to the immune system are released from you hugging yourself for 10 seconds and telling yourself you love yourself. And that you're sorry that your own thoughts and your own fears and your own worries manifested this dissonant energy vibration and, and that you didn't catch it because your body was telling you. My body was telling me. We, we tend not to listen to that, uh, you know, just like that car, that vessel, that vehicle we're driving around. There's some uh, indicator lights. And when those indicator lights go on, it's probably a good idea we pay attention. You know, the body as a conscious manifestation of coarse energy into the energetic being we would term the physical body is immortal. Science to this day has no idea why it decays at all. And I'm going to solve the problem for everybody. The reason it decays, it vibrates apart. It literally vibrates apart. Now, let's be clear. There is no time that a single entity on this planet has ever died before they were supposed to. There is nothing that is not magnificently synchronistic, magnificently made full use of, and woven into the fabric of our conscious evolution in, in spiritual growth and, and, and rising through the multidimensional plane uh, through our physical existence and, and into a larger, more expansive existence. Th this is the joy of it. And in, in this body structure, it, these various energies, okay, coming from top to bottom, getting finer and finer, manifesting the same as above, so below, Okay, and again, those are reference points, not actual above and below. But our, our body's structure here is a, uh, a vibrational being. And when our subconscious or conscious ego thoughts, all based on separation, fear, or guilt, start piling up, start training together day after day, week after week, year after year. Our body's alarm bells have gone off a long time ago and they start when we begin to feel bad. And we must remember that when we feel bad, it doesn't belong to someone else. It's not situational. We feel bad because the thoughts we're thinking are not in line with universal truth and not in line with our higher self. They're negative thoughts. And their lies we're telling ourselves, And our body's trying to warn us. Because what we're doing is we're setting up that dissonant vibration within our body's energy field. And that dissonant vibration can grow and grow until finally, because the physical world is a monument or a leftover of what we've first started through thought, we get physically ill. And the one thing that the chakras can be used for, uh, useful for, okay, and, and again, we're talking about just nodal points of energy, not, you know, uh, actual devices. Um, the chakras can be useful for examining where we may be getting stuck when it comes to our being. And this ties right into feelings of anxiety when you're in a crowd or, or being on edge. Okay, there's two things that could be happening. One, a lot of really empathic people are just not aware that they're feeling a, a literal uh, hurricane of emotions. 
and 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 emotive energy is coming off a crowd of people they're in the middle of and and you know in those situations you just have to learn not to get into crowds because it's hard to get that under control the more you begin to feel the the more you the the inputs open up okay it's like exercising a muscle you you've always had the ability it's just been stagnant and the more you feel the, the more you can um, feel like there's a buffeting going on against you. And, and all you have to do is return to that calm center place, okay? But if you're feeling anxiety in the chest area, okay, the, the, the word for the chakra in Sanskrit for the, for the chest is um, anahata. And it literally means um, unbroken, untouched. Uh, hasn't been breached so a whole heart a whole open heart but if you have egoically felt your heart has been broken and, and you have felt that that your heart is closed off because of the pain you've felt you've been you've been subjected to from other people's hands when you come into those situations you may feel a tightening here and that tightening is happening at this energetic level because you, your body's system is closing itself off to what's outside. Because of egoically what's happened in the past. Those old, those old fears, those old memories, you're pulling them into the present moment and it's having a very real effect on your body right now. If they tend to gather in the stomach, which is the other common place we would feel anxiety, okay? And that is the Manipura, which is the um, uh, gem or pearl city, the, the, the place of our self-confidence, the, the place of our doingness, the, the, um, the, the, the place of our, our, our ability to achieve goals come from this center down in here in our stomach. And if we're feeling anxiety and our stomach is tightening up, well, we usually have some self-worth issues. We're usually not feeling as worthy as we should. And I can certainly talk more. Um, you know who you are, who, who brought up the anxiety and stuff. You can get a hold of me. We can talk about it anytime. Uh, back to the physical illness. So when our body manifests a physical illness, there's always two reactions we tend to have. And the first is we get upset with ourselves. It's like, you know, I can't have this happening now. I have live videos to do, well, whatever. I, I try to leave that side of it alone totally. The second thing we can do is we can say, okay, let's watch. Let's see what's happening. Let, let's see where this energy is. And you know, what it has been for me, and the reason it's happening in my throat area and, and my chest area, is that for decades I have had this level of awareness. For decades I have known uh, the, 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 uh, a, a larger picture, and I have remained silent. And I have remained silent out of fear of a prophecy that my mother put upon me when I was 12 years old. And, you know, the uh, women in my mother's family were seers. They, they, they all had uh, psychic abilities of some sort. They, they were all highly tuned that way. Uh, my, my aunt was very similar to I am when it comes to animals. And uh, my mother uh, would see into the future. And um, as you know, with psychics, they see a possible future. They, they see uh, a culmination of the current state of things down the road should everything remain relatively static. Okay, so, you know, uh, about, it was literally the time I, I ran away from home because I did run away from home. I had a big fight with my mother and left when I was 12 and a half years old. And the last thing she told me was that she had had a vision of me and in that vision, she understood that I was the Antichrist. Now, you can imagine, I'm a born and raised Catholic. I've been an altar boy since I've been like in seven years old. You know, loved the church, loved God. And here was my mother telling me that I was going to destroy it all. 
And you, you can imagine how that hit, right? And it, a lot of years went by before I came to understand that, you know what? I, I am an antichrist. I'm an anti-establishment version of Christ. I'm an anti-the Christ of religion. I'm an anti-the Christ of, of any uh, re religion that would proclaim separation or that some of God's children could be less somehow or not worthy somehow. I am anti anything to do that portrays Christ as a being who said, it's my way or the highway. I'm here, to, I'm here to die for you because of all the mistakes my dad made when he built you. Makes perfect sense. I'm against, I'm anti Christ who says, worship me. Because Christ didn't say, worship me. He never, ever said that. He told us flat out in plain, well, <laughs> English these days, okay. <laughs> Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek. You know, good chance there was a lot of Aramaic going on in his day. Uh, he, he told us that we are gods, that, that, that the kingdom is within us. That, that it's written on our heart. We, we don't have to go looking for it. You, you don't even need me to tell you this. I'm just a reminder. I'm just ringing a bell, waving a flag, saying, remember what you are, remember what you are. You've already been told 10,000 times. We just have to absorb it. We just have to start living it. We have to start being it. We have to start having the confidence in ourselves to be it. You know, I, I can honestly imagine that, you know, Gandhi, you, you can imagine him on that train with his first class ticket in Africa and, and getting kicked off that train because he was a man of color and making a decision that would change the course of, of history. As, as one small person, we look at that and we go, well, how? How? Faith. Belief in oneself. Belief that you are here for purpose. Divine purpose. Now, when illness strikes us, we very often want to blame ourselves. And we should never do that. This is all about evolution and growth. We need to learn to look. We need to learn to listen to our bodies. And, and we are a society of symptom fighters by nature. Why? Because so much often the symptoms are much easier to face than the problem or the issue that lies underneath it. You know, we build suicide bridges for a couple hundred thousand dollars a piece. Suicide uh, fences uh, on the, the big bridges, for example, down in Vancouver, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars. And my question always is, is and, and, you know, all these politicians are down there and there's handshaking and flag waving and ribbons being cut. Look, we just built a suicide fence. Why not ask the question instead, what are we as a society doing that we need to have a suicide fence to keep people from killing themselves? By the way, that's at the same time we cut funding to counselors for the suicide prevention hotline system. Same newspaper. Front page and about two-thirds of the way through. <laughs> we, we, we fight symptoms all the time. And we fight symptoms with ourselves. Why? Because it's easier sometimes than facing what's going on inside. You know, Kelly and I talk about this a lot. Um, and, and she says to me, you know, it's a lot harder than people realize. And I say, yeah, I know. Being brutally honest with oneself. brutally honest, totally open with oneself, totally acceptance of wherever you are truly at, opening yourself to accept what, what, whatever, you know, go ahead and make the statements about the fears you feel, about the issues you feel you're having, uh, uh, about make those and then examine them. Take a good look at those statements and see the lies that you tell yourself. 
and understand why those are happening. You know, we as, as highly powerful spiritual beings having a human experience, we have the ability to shape and create our own destiny here. And we each have a gift. We each have this wondrous, one-of-a-kind gift that only you can deliver to the world. And like I said, uh, just like these two little bubble guys down here, we, we, we have these two energies within us. The, this, this, this relativistic ego as well, which is actually two halves. And, and we, we have to get some harmony happening between those two halves. And when we develop that harmony, when we develop um, the ability to get into uh, line with our higher selves on a regular basis, we will begin to let go of all those things that cause one of the biggest problems for our body, and that is stress. Now, this stress is, uh, it can be physical, but 90% of the stress that does us damage is interior stress. It's stress that goes on because of ego. And what it does is it literally, because the body can't tell the difference between something that's happening outside of it and something that's happening according to your mind. It reacts exactly the same. So in these highly stressed out states inside, day after day, our endorphin systems are elevated, our blood pressure is elevated, we're, we're, we're releasing... Um, uh, hormones at an accelerated rate. Why? Because that fear, uh, fight or flight reflex that stress stimulates is meant to save our butts from a tiger or a charging elephant. It, it's not meant to be going on day after day. We inflict that upon ourselves day after day, year after year, until one day this magnificent perfection of a machine that that once you begin to understand how this body actually functions you can't help but marvel at the at the artistry of what we drive around on this planet but we abuse it we beat it up inside you know i'm not talking about the, the exterior minor damages breaking bones etc I'm talking about the stuff we do to ourselves, the stuff that creates all this dissonant vibration in ourselves. Now, don't get me wrong. This does not mean that you have dragged a terminal illness onto yourself, per se. <laughs> but it's an opportunity. And it may not be an opportunity to continue in this particular time frame as this particular egoic identity. It may be an opportunity to learn how to die. It may be an opportunity to show others through your dying how to die. We, we just, we, we don't know on our thought level. And because we don't know on our thought level, as beings working on raising our consciousness, still with thoughts going on, still with, with, with kind of a, uh, you know, uh, uh, right now we're, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're playing like this. We're, you know, some days oh, a little more unconscious, some days a little more conscious, some days really conscious, some days, oh, wow, you know, totally unconscious. And, and, and this is sort of where, where, where we go. And this is the journey. And it, it's, you know, gradually it opens up. But when we have those days when we get sucked right into unconsciousness and, and, and our egoic states, we can self-heal through that same thought process that made us ill to start with. Now, I'm not saying you don't go to a doctor. But understand that dealing with the physical side of it is one aspect. And you will not repair the exterior physical if you do not deal with the inside. Something will crop up later. For me, it's been skin cancer three times that's cropped up on my life. And every time I have to go back to nature, I have to introspect, I have to examine where I'm not uh, fully letting myself be me and move forward again. 
Do I ever worry about whether I'm going to die or not? Not at all. And because at an egoic level, at a thought level, I don't know the purpose in my death should I die, I am going to, with faith, exercise whatever comes before me from the knowledge of what I truly am. You know, we, we get so afraid, we see people praying for healing, praying to God to be healed. God will not heal you. Now, a lot of people may say, wait a minute, if God is all loving, why wouldn't he heal you? Okay, and we're going to go back into the Bible for that for a minute, okay? Jesus Christ was a fully enlightened being, and he couldn't heal everybody. Some places he went, he could heal nobody. Some places he went, he could heal everybody. How was the healing done then? Do you remember the story of the centurion who had the slave back at home who was deathly ill? And this, this Roman centurion had faith in what he saw in this man. And Christ told him, you, you, <laughs> your servant's fine. Your faith has healed him. It's beautiful. It's, it's, it's beyond words to me. It, it, it just causes one of those events in me where everything wells up. I mean, the, this is what we are. This is our strength. This is our, our gifts. This is the beauty of our existence. Our faith, our, our thoughts, our one-pointed truth and, and moving forward within that truth can allow us to do anything. And if healing is what is capable and what is necessary within this life at a body level, it will occur. But I would encourage you on all levels to not get caught up in being ill. Don't dive into all the drama. Sure, at a physical level, it, 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 it can suck. I mean, my throat's been sore. I haven't slept very well the last two nights. So my body's been achy. I haven't been able to do my uh, uh, stair climber, you know. And uh, I've had to avoid my mic hikes because sugar doesn't help either. And I can tell you, missing out on your candy is probably the worst of the lot. <laughs> but at an inner level, I, I'm actually at peace. I'm, I'm enjoying looking at what happens to ego when we get ill. Ego gets suppressed even more. There's, a, there's an opening that comes. Every day in every way, we're given openings back to the divine. Openings back to that connectivity. So keep in mind, we create the dissonant energy fields within our body. This is a sovereign being. We are responsible for our being. If you are loving yourself and hugging yourself and caring for yourself on a regular basis, there, there is no one on this planet who has the power to put a hex on you or to affect your level of being to the point where it could cause you harm. Just like your body's immune system, there is a spiritual immune system. And that is called and is enforced throughout the entirety of the universe and it's free will. Nobody, nobody can touch your free will, your sovereignty of being. Um, that really covers the, the, the whole idea of, about physical illness. And uh, I'm going to change my screen here because I want to read one little thing before we wrap this up. And I ran into this on a post today, and I think this is beautiful. The world no longer has a pull on you. The world can no longer show you anything that frightens you or makes you upset. As you practice, the reasons why become apparent. You begin to understand that your body is simply karmic in nature, action, reaction. For as long as you believe you have that body, it's going through this action and reaction, this karma. Everything is preordained. 
Therefore, you'll go through experience after experience after experience as a body. And that's how it appears. But in the process of waking up and in the realization that it's, it's all karmic, it's all action and reaction, and that it's not really you, you begin to laugh. For you now understand that you can never die and you believe it in your heart. You were never born. You are not the experiencer. You are the self, free from all of this. Even though you're going through experiences with your body, you become more aware every day that you are free from body consciousness, free from experience in this world, in this world, but no longer of this world. You have total faith and trust in something with, with which you're just beginning to feel, but even that slightest feeling of it, you give your heart to it. You're just beginning to feel that bliss consciousness, that Christ consciousness state. You're just beginning to feel slightly at first that joy, that total freedom, and you know something is happening. As you experience these things, you will begin to leave the world alone. You will stop becoming entangled by the world. Again, you will find that your duties become less. You're growing. You're unfolding. Things like anger begin to subside entirely. Depression, all these bad feelings that you used to have, they begin to disappear. And many times, you will find that certain things in your life that have caused you pain and discomfort, that, that you, you can't even register it anymore. It's, it's been removed from your consciousness. You're not looking for them to disappear, of course. You're not looking for anything. You're not even looking for self-realization. How beautiful. Now, that was written uh, by Carla Dawn Mitsis, M-I-T-S-I-S, and you can actually find her on Facebook. And, and that was just fantastic. I, I just love that. And I wanted to read that with you as a way to end um, our, our, our engagement today. And, and again, from the bottom of my heart, I love you all. I appreciate all of your presence and, and what you do for me. And let's keep the questions rolling. Uh, anything you want to talk about, anything you want to dive into a little deeper, um, we've got uh, probably a dozen videos upcoming in the next two weeks uh, on top of the live videos and more in progress. My love to you. Namaste. Uh, Kelly also says hi from over there. She's on the couch. <laughs> and, and my best to you all. And again, I, I just want to reiterate, we are all in this together, okay? If any of you need to talk, if you've got something you just don't feel comfortable dealing with other people with and you just want to bounce it off of a stranger, I'm here for you. My wife is here for you. We've, we've talked about it. We, we can make arrangements. Get a hold of us a messenger. We'll make a time. We'll talk face-to-face. -face. That's the beauty that this technology can offer. So we can connect a world apart and literally pull ourselves together. That's what we can do with this. This is the joy of it. Much love. Namaste.